Michael Medbrown, Daily Devotional by Alan G. White Fortresses for God, April 13th Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 There were many in Christ's day, as there are today, over whom the control of Satan for a time seemed broken. Through the grace of God, they were set free from evil spirits that had held dominion over their souls. They rejoiced in the love of God. But, like the stony ground hearers of the parable, they did not abide in his love. They did not surrender themselves to God daily, that Christ might dwell in their hearts. And, with, and when the evil spirit returned with, with seven other spirits more wicked than himself, they were wholly dominated by the power of evil. When the soul surrenders itself to Christ, a new power takes possession of the new heart. A change is wrought, which we can never accomplish for ourselves. It is a supernatural work, bringing a supernatural element into the human nature. Into human nature, the soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress, which he holds in a revolted world, and. He intends that no authority shall be known in it but his own. A soul thus kept in possession by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assault of Satan. But unless we do yield ourselves to the control of Christ, we shall be dominated by the wicked one. We do not inevitably so we must inevitably be under the control of one or the other of the two great powers that are contending for supremacy of the, of the world. It is not necessary for us to deliberately choose to, the service of the kingdom of darkness in order to come under its dominion. We have only to neglect to ally ourselves with the kingdom of the light. If we do not cooperate with heavenly, heavenly agencies, Satan will take possession of the heart and will make it his, his abiding place. The only defense against evil is the indwelling of Christ in the heart through faith in his righteousness. Unless we become vitally connected with God, we can never resist the unholy effect of self-love, self-indulgence, and temptation to sin. We may leave off many bad habits for the time. We may part company with Satan, but without vital connection with God, through surrender of ourselves to him, moment by moment, we shall be overcome. Without a personal acquaintance with Christ and a continual communion, we are at the mercy of the enemy and shall do his bidding to, to the end. The most common manifestation of sin against the Holy Spirit is in persistently slighting heaven's invitation to repent. Every step in the rejection of Christ is a step towards the rejection of salvation. Homeward bound.